Hey everyone, welcome to Homes for Beginners where I show you how to do repairs around the house yourself. In this video I'll be showing you how to troubleshoot trailer lights. This includes everything at the vehicle's lights all the way down to the lights of the trailer and everything in between. When I bought this trailer, the lights were acting up. These are the original incandescent lights. Newer trailers may have LEDs, however the same process still applies. This is a four wire system. Therefore, the green wire is for the right signal, yellow is for the left signal, brown is for the parking lights, and white is for the ground. Green and yellow also function as the brake lights. I'll include the wire coding list in the video description, which will cover the different types of wiring systems for the trailer lights. As you can see, the signal bulb is acting up. It can be hard to see on camera. The current light output is faintly blinking. However, when the connection is moved, the lights start working again. The previous owner was nice enough and hooked up a new connector so I was able to get the trailer home and that did fix half the problems. I discovered the problem was from the truck's side as well and I'll show you how to check that in a moment. Once I pulled the harness apart on the truck I found crimp connections were used and typically I'm not a fan of those. If the crimp connection isn't tight enough which is what the case was here there won't be a good connection and eventually the wire will pop out. Next is that crimp connections don't provide a weatherproof seal unless you use the heat shrink style. However, they can be expensive to purchase or at least where I live. Using a test light, this can determine if there is power at the connection. Turn on your parking and hazard lights. The hazard lights will activate both the left and right turning signals. Connect the test light to the ground terminal. This is the exposed one. Then probe the other three terminals. The test light should illuminate solid for the parking light and flash the signal lights. As you can see the one signal terminal isn't getting any power and this is where the wire is disconnected. If I do probe the bare wire then it will illuminate. On the parking lights that's not receiving any power either and that's most likely due to an issue at the crimp connection. If it's not working some of these do have a module so that may be faulty or there may be a fault to where the trailer harness is connected to the vehicle. Inspect the wire's insulation for any damage as well. This would allow in moisture causing a break in the conductor. Hooking up the trailer connector, as you can see the wires have already been cut from when the trailer was brought home. Clip the test light to the exposed ground wire. Make sure you don't cross any bare conductors. Use electrical tape if needed. If they are crossed, this may blow a fuse on your truck. Make sure you do inspect the wires and connector on the trailer's end as well. Once connected, I can also check the exposed conductor on the plug side to ensure it's working as well. Do not pierce the casing as this will cause a spot where the moisture can get in, causing the conductor to corrode and cause another failure down the road. In order to get out this specific type of light, use a standard screwdriver with the tip wrapped in electrical tape so you don't scratch the light. And then slowly pry it out of the rubber grommet. Instead of testing just past the plug where I have the stripped wires, you can also check at the light. This would involve removing the light, either the bulb, or in this case the whole assembly. There may sometimes be a plug on the back to disconnect, or you may have to remove the bulb. With the lights turned on from the truck and the connector plugged in, probe the plug or bulb socket. If you are finding an issue between the plug and light, there's an issue somewhere along the wire, or there may be even a ground problem. You can replace just one wire, or there's kits available to replace the whole wiring. As for fixing the problems I have here, first is cutting the wires to length and removing the spot where the issue was. Try to pick a good area where the copper is still shiny. Discolored copper will indicate it's been exposed to moisture, which won't give a good connection. Strip the wires as needed. Here you can see the comparison between the clean and discolored copper wires. If you can't cut it back any further, clean it with a scuffing pad. Before the wires are twisted together, in order to achieve a waterproof repair, I'm using adhesive filled shrink tube. I have a kit so I can select the correct size based on the wire used and then cut it to length using side cutters. This needs to be installed before the connection is soldered. Another option would be liquid tape, but it doesn't apply as cleanly. Twist the wires together on the truck's side. I used rosin core solder which does clean the wire to some extent as well. For connections I'm using a western splice which is a commonly known typed soldered connection. Before the connections are sealed up I'm giving it one last check with a test light. Apply the heat shrink over the connection make sure it's centered on the joint. 
Using a heat gun, warm the heat shrink. When the casing is heated, it'll shrink and melt the sealant that adheres to the existing casing, making a waterproof connection. Here is a quick view of the heat shrink, and as you can see, there is melted adhesive exposed on the outer edges of the tubes. On the trailer side, twist the wires together and solder the connections, which I've already done here. Again, apply the heat shrink. Make sure that heat shrink is installed before soldering the connections. Another view once the repair is finished up on the trailer side. The wires are put back into their split loop casing. This protects the wiring from any road debris. Electrical tape is used to close up the casing so the wires can't come out. Another problem can also be a corroded trailer connector. These can sometimes be cleaned up by soaking them in vinegar, but if it's too far gone, it'll need to be replaced. It's a good idea to apply dielectric grease to the terminals, then install a cap so it's protected from the weather. And finally, it's installed back onto the trailer tongue. The wires in the truck can also have split loop casing installed, then it's tied up in behind the bumper using cable ties. After that, verify the lights are working and you're set. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like and drop a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more home DIY videos. Thank you for watching.